Hey everyone, thanks for joining in. Ajay here. Uh, I'll just give other folks a couple of minutes to join in as they join from other meetings and we'll start this shortly. I see people clicking in. Perfect, let's start this. I think a lot of people have joined in and we can see folks trickling in as we go forward. So I'll just switch on my video. So I think most of you have met me in one forum or another and we've had a conversation with respect to Eco Van Digit. So thank you everyone for joining in the Digit 2.7 release webinar. Uh, we'll be taking you through the different features and highlights of the Digit 2.7 release and any questions that you have, you can definitely ask during the session. So first house rules, uh, basically videos of most of the folks because we're going to be doing demos and even after me, even my video is going to be turned off. Uh, if you do want to reach out, I think there is the chat option. So you can always use the chat window to put uh, any queries that you have, any comments that you have. And you can use the Q&A box if you have any specific questions. So uh, at the end of the session, we'll be basically going through all the questions and uh, I can talk about the structure as I go through the session as well. And you can all obviously always raise your hand and we will unmute you so that you can go ahead and ask your questions. So this is going to be a fairly interactive session. Before we begin the session, I think uh, I want to just take 30 seconds to talk about our partnership with the Central Ministry in India. So uh, Digit Urban currently is being now offered as Upyog by Center for Digital Governance, which is part of Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs to the different states and local bodies in India. So multiple states have already signed up and they have done an MOU with uh, the ministry for the same and if there is an implementation which is going on in which you are involved you can obviously also talk to your clients which is a state or a ULB to see if they'd be open to adopting OPO as well so there are links for testing the platform as well so these are uh, there's a public instance which is available for you to actually go through the platform and use it as a citizen or an employee similar to the feature that you would have seen in digit so we have a public instance as well where you can go through all the features of the Digit Urban platform as well as the sanitation applications. So this is the structure of the session. Uh, today we'll be majorly focusing on the national and the state dashboard demos. We'll talk about the birth and death registration module, uh, which again was built by one of our partners, SI partners that implemented this across India. And we also will be talking about a new feature, which is property tax integration with trade license. So while we go through these demos, we it's not meant to be a purely technical demo. We will also talk about why we decided to build these features. What kind of capability does this provide to the end stakeholder, which would either be a ULB employee or an administrator or even a state administrator or the central uh, administrator at a central ministry level as well. So what value do these features bring to different stakeholders across, uh, I think the entire ecosystem is something that we'll definitely talk about and how you can also benefit from these features as they are again, part of the open source digit stack. So I hope this will be a very interactive session. So any questions and queries you have, you can always put them in the chat window and the Q&A box. And after each section, we will individually talk about them. At the end of the session, we will open it up for a general Q&A. So if you have something which is specific to the webinar or generally you want to know anything about eGov or Digit, you can definitely put that in the chat window as well. Uh, okay, so I think one person has said that they're not able to hear me. Are all of you able to hear me? You can just say yes in the chat window. Okay, you can hear me, perfect. Perfect, let's get this started. Before we start, how is everyone doing? All of you are good. If you are feeling good, I mean, just put it in the chat box and we can get this started. Perfect, awesome. 
perfect let's kick this off uh, so we'll start off with abhishek uh, suresh who's part of the product team so we'll take you through the national and the state dashboards and the birth and death registration module then we'll have shankar from the product team who'll take you through the property tax integration with trade license and as i said any questions put them in the chat window let's keep it interactive and i'll hand it off to abhishek abhishek you want to show uh, your screen i'll just stop sharing yeah thank you ajay yeah please let me know if you can see my screen yes it's visible yeah. Hi, uh, very good afternoon to all. So uh, I am working with Ego as a product manager, and uh, this is the demo for the dashboard which we built at, which has a capability at the national as well as the state level. So first, I'll just uh, begin with why we decided to build a dashboard, uh, why it is important for governments to have a dashboard, and uh, then we will move on to some of the features that we developed for the dashboard. or the decision support system as you call it and finally we'll move on to the uh, a working demo for the dashboard yeah so this is not limited but few of the at a high level why do you need a dashboard so nowadays governments are rolling out a lot of digital public goods they have plenty of digital products to deliver the services to citizens but how do you get and you generate a lot of data from your digital products but how do you uh, how do you analyze those data and how do you act upon that data where you can improve the products as well as you can give better delivery of uh, services to your citizens so you so that uh, one major aspect of why you need a dashboard is that you can make data decision make data through decisions because uh, currently without uh, in this day and age without any data or uh, without any uh, uh, having without analyzing the feedback that you receive from the citizens so you cannot improve the product as well as the services that you deliver second is that uh, with a dashboard you can actually monitor the performance by performance here i mean uh, by it could be anybody it depending on how you have configured the dash, uh, dashboard Uh, for example if uh, as a government you want to uh, let's say you are delivering a service uh, for collection of tax property tax let's say and you want to see how the your employees uh, at the urban local bodies how much how efficient they are in uh, collecting the taxes against the demand that they generate so uh, so that you can account for that as well as in the future releases thirdly uh, you can monitor the progress that is this is mainly applicable to the national dashboard that is uh, if you are implementing let's say you are implementing uh, your services across different states and you want to know what is the current status of the program implementation how many ulbs or urban local bodies have the program be implemented how many modules have the program been implemented so all of this data you can actually get with a dashboard which would have been otherwise a very manual tedious process to actually go and collect these data from each and every ulb because currently india has a more than 4000 i mean over 4000 uh, ulbs and uh, without an efficient monitoring tool it is uh, it is almost impossible lastly um, you can monitor the citizen satisfaction and uh, understand where which part of the delivery of service you are lacking and uh, how you can improve the your delivery in the future as well so moving on some of the dashboard features that our dashboard that we developed covers is that you can view all the major kpis that were de uh, defined according to the needs of the our uh, client in this case is the government and uh, we can see the kpis across all states and we can drill down all of these kpis from a national level to a state level even up to a ward level and uh, you can see detailed definitions of each attribute or a metric or if it is a graph and you can uh, add any filters 
to refine the view of your data so that you can compare uh, data between states or you know between ULPs or maybe even between modules. Uh, then you can uh, change the denominations for a customized view of analytics and also you can share or download the dashboard as a whole as or as individual cards for certain sections of the dashboard. So uh, coming to the how the data actually flows into the dashboard, I'll just give a brief, brief overview. So currently this is what is implemented, but I want to stress that this is not, this is this need not to be the same way. So uh, the dashboard is highly config configurable and customizable as per the requirement. So in our implementation, so uh, all of the digit modules, or even if it is not made on digit, if it is any of uh, any products which are not made on digit, if it is a non-digit product also, they can flow from all the states from from the ULBs to the state level and finally it is aggregated and collated at a national level and it is displayed across charts or kpis or tables as you can see in the bottom section of the screen so with that said uh, if you have any uh, any questions i'll just i will move on to the uh, working demo i'll take that as a no yeah So this is the uh, national urban real-time dashboard that collates the information across all the 29 states uh, and the union territories if applicable. And uh, so all the data that is being captured at a state level, you can build an adapter that connects this data to the dashboard so that it transmits the data uh, on a real time and it gets displayed on the dashboard. So this dashboard has mainly three sections. First one is an overview card where all of the KPIs that were covered in individual modules are aggregated. And this is also aggregated at a state level. And it is for the current financial year. So all of these data, I want to stress again that you can, all of this you can configure, configure according to your needs. And uh, here uh, in the overview card, if you want to see what is the definition, you know, what you want to know what is under implementation. So, which means the program has been set up in the state, the task force has been constituted and the fellows have been de deployed. Or if this is about the total number of applications across all the government services, you can see some of applications across mod all modules. So coming to the second part of the dashboard. So this shows you an aggregate view of what, how the project is faring across the different states. So this is color coded in the map of India, in this case. And uh, you can see uh, how the program is implement getting implemented in different states of India. So if it is a live, so you can see, this is all for demo purposes, so not on real data, but uh, you can see Punjab, Punjab, the state of Punjab has 22 ULBs, which are live. Uttarakhand, uh, there are 17 ULBs. And in the state of Maharashtra, it is under implementation, or if it is the state of Kerala, it is, onboarded and uh, none means uh, no activities, no work has started in the state. So in the in any of the live states, if you want to see further on how, how many ULBs are there in the state and how many modules are live, by module I mean each module like property tax or trade license or any other modules, uh, any other product that you use. So if I click on product, uh, Punjab, so it will show how many total number of ULBs are there and how many ULBs are live in that particular state and uh, how many modules are live categorically across different ULBs. So you can see property tax is live in 12 ULBs, fire and in eight ULBs, water and sewerage in 12 ULBs and so forth. Similarly, as you, this is always, uh, the data is always for the April, but you can see uh, as the time progresses, you can see how the, on, how the um, ULBs are getting onboarded uh, across time. Finally, the last portion, the third portion shows you a high level view uh, of each module that is uh, the KPI is related to each module. That is one, one is related to your revenue that is, and one will be related to the service. 
So this is the sum of revenue collection from property tax. You can see it is three lakh, and it also shows an indication of how much it is faring compared to the previous year. So here you can see it is almost thirty percent higher than last year you have collection, and almost one hundred and thirty-eight percent more than uh, more number of properties you have assessed compared to the same time in the previous year. Similar for other modules as well. So. Um, i will uh, go into any one of the uh, module to show a detail so i'll just use property tax as a reference yeah so the overall ui uh, for all of these modules are more or less similar so property tax is a revenue revenue module so you have a revenue aspect of it as well as you are also delivering a service uh, where whereby you are collecting applications uh, for uh, collecting the tax so you have from the top range uh, the top bar you can see a date range which you can customize according to how much granular you want to see the data whether you want to see for entire year previous year this month this week or you can customize it according to let's say you want to see only from march to this month so you get the so the data get changed according to your selection and here in the state filter you can see you can select which all states data that you want to see if you so by default it shows the sum total of all the states if you want to see only for one two particular states or one particular states it will show accordingly and for ulbs you can let's say if you want to search for any particular ulb that also you can uh, uh, type here and select the ulb accordingly and you can clear the ulb filters by one by one or just clear all of them together and the denominations also you can share, change according to how how um, how much data that you want how you want to see the data yeah ram to answer your question you can see the ulb filters here the data is aggregated the basic data is, is actually coming from the urban local bodies so so abhishek was showing the state filter on select of a state what all the urban local bodies that are pertaining to the state will come in this filter if multiple states are selected in the before filter then the aggregation of uh, urban local bodies from all these three three states will come in the top bar so that user can do assessment either at the ulb level or at the state level or at the nation level so now here it is a state and the urban local body combination yeah so thank you shankar so uh, coming down so you have a revenue and a service tab for uh, wherever it is applicable so in case of property tax the revenue will have will show you the collection what was the target collection set by the state or for that particular filter that you applied and what how much the target was achieved uh, for that particular filter that you applied then uh, coming to the service tab so you can see all of the metrics that those are related to the service like uh, how many total number of applications were there total how many properties were assessed and what is the completion rate of assessment and similar to these two tabs so for each of these tabs you can also see the time series graph of uh, how the collection is faring across the months so this will also be according to the selection of your date range and in case of service it will be total number of properties assessed coming down so in case of uh, revenue so this will show the total collection by usage type in this pie chart and uh, so in for, for a property tax it is residential and commercial and industrial and it can see the detail percentage and the row numbers if you scroll uh, hover over each slice of these pie and uh, you can also see let's say you want to compare between uh, as an administrator you want to compare how different states are performing in the collection of property tax so the top three performing states is listed here and also the bottom three so this is only with the limited data that's why you are seeing the same states here but when you are all the states listed so you can click on show more to see uh, all of the uh, how or the ranking for all the states now coming to the uh, key performance indicator that is state wise split of the collection so here you have different columns for total collection total transaction total assessed properties and target collection so let's say you want to see in the state of uttar pradesh uh, you know you want to see the collection for a particular ward so if you want to do that just click on the state so all the ulbs pertaining to that state will get 
listed here. And one more drill down will give you the word wise collection uh, for that particular ULB. And if similar to the previous filters, just click on VR to um, remove the filters. And you can also um, sort the, each of these columns according to your, you know, your assessment, uh, whether you want to sort it based on collection or based on total transaction, all of these are possible. And also you can see the um, usage based on different usage types. So this is another um, tabular chart that shows the property collection in terms of uh, the split of the tax. So which will be uh, configurable depending on which uh, country or state that you're coming from. Yeah, so for tax cuts also, you can uh, you can ha have a drill down and uh, click on, if you click on. Uh, okay, so actually the, the drill through goes <clears throat> to the very basic hierarchy that is defined for this particular uh, application. Here the hierarchy is at the ward level. Uh, the information, the property information is at the ward level, multiple wards or uh, zones aggregated to show the uh, admin local body and multiple admin local body to the state. So that it's easy for the administrator to, to go to the very basic level and see what is a property tax target, a target collection uh, that is set and what is the target that is achieved. So that's the advantage of uh, uh, drilling into the very basic level of hierarchy that is defined in the application. <clears throat> yeah. So that was all about uh, the property tax. So now maybe I can go to another module that is somewhat different, uh, probably like a public grievances redressal. So this is primarily a, you know, a service module where you know you don't have any collection or revenue or targets but you uh, you can assess how the citizens you know where, where the citizens are complaining from what type of complaints are of the top priority how many complaints have been listed and which areas are these complaints coming from so with all these the administrator can go you know or assign those people uh, to resources to those particular locations or can target those complaints which constitute their you know 80% of their complaints so this makes the job of the administrator much easier so that uh, they can resolve the grievances of uh, the public. Similar to the other module, you have a date state ULB denomination filters, so which I'm not going to uh, share again. And uh, you have an overview, you have a community close complaints. You can see the complaints by channel. You can see the complaints by the department. You can configure which department you have within your grievance, uh, grievance cell. And you can also see how the complaints are uh, faring by status. If you see, you know, 70% uh, of your complaints are in open status. So you can, you know, it actually questions the efficiency of your employees of, uh, or, you know, if, if, you, if you are seeing a lot of close complaints, but if you are seeing a lot of reassignments, which means the complaint has not been uh, resolved accurately as per the government. And uh, so coming down, you can also see the total complaints by status across a time period. So this is a split in the graph itself. Let's say for, with, uh, for this particular duration, you can see how many complaints have been resolved, how many are open, how many are resigned, how many are rejected, how many are resigned. And so it's very, very, uh, very, very granular level. You can see all these details. And here also you can see the average solution. So across all the complaints that have been resolved, you can see how much what's the average resolution. So as an administrator, your target will be to bring this to, uh, you know, bringing this resolution time to minimum for better uh, efficiency. And you can also see the number of unique citizens which are logged into your system and what sort of complaints are, you know, citizens are the citizens complaining about. Like here you can say the garbage cleaning is, constitutes most of the complaints and drainage, street lights and road repair. So all of this, <clears throat> so you can configure how many, you know, how many complaints that you want to see in showing this graph, all of these are configurable, like I mentioned. <laughs> and uh, similar to the tabular chart that you saw before, so you can see a service report uh, across different states, like if, even if it is 30 states or 40 states, all of them can be listed and drill down for each of these states is possible like we showed before. So if it is for Uttar Pradesh, you can see how many complaints are being reassigned or resolved. And you can, again, the administrator can go up to, even up to my award level to see how many, how is the complaints and their resolution faring. 
Yeah. So actually, this is an exemplar where we show that we all have we have the key components like there is a bar graph, there is a stack chart, there is an area graph, there is a pie chart, which is defined in the framework. It's up to the bureaucrat, depending on the need or what is the needle that they want to move, they can rearrange the graphs and then come back with a different API, which would suit them. But this is an overall idea of how uh, a DSS would work. Yeah. And finally, uh, one aspect I did not show was that you can share this uh, dashboard as a whole, uh, as any over email, or you can even share across WhatsApp, which is a popular channel. Or you can download this uh, dashboard, uh, the entire dashboard. I don't know if you can see my screen. Yeah. So you can uh, download the entire uh, dashboard here, or you can even download by each card. Let's say, um, the administrator only want to see the tabular chart so that will get downloaded as an excel and so you can again you can use many of the functionalities of excel to actually uh, play around with your data and reach your own analysis so i'm not going to go go to that similar to other cards also you can download as an image or uh, share across email or share across whatsapp So uh, I'll just pause here and uh, wait for any questions or if anybody wants to go to any specific modules also, that is fine. I think Vikas, you had a couple of questions. One was, I think Shankar just answered us, which is where does this data come from? So uh, currently it flows via the digit application, but given that we use open APIs, any system which is <clears throat> potentially capturing grievances can the data from there can also flow into this system. So any application similar to PGR can potentially also leverage something like this. Uh, second is, I think you had asked about, one second, I'm just pulling it out, how many ULBs are currently connected? So this, uh, both of these dashboards have been added as part of 2.7 released which has come out just last in a few, just in last few weeks. So as in when states and the central instance, which is uh, CDG, I talked about them, they adopt uh, this or when their platform is upgraded to use digit 2.7 is when data will start flowing into these dashboards. So again, this is a fairly new feature, which is come in on the platform, hence we're showcasing it here. So currently there is nothing yet live in terms of uh, data coming onto this dashboard. Just correct me if I'm wrong, Abhishek or Shankar. Yeah, yeah you're right, Ajay. So currently uh, uh, Punj uh, the Punj state of Punjab, they are building the adapter to push the data from the state to the dashboard. So this is ongoing on and uh, maybe within a month or so, so the ULB should be live to share their data. Uh, yeah, so in Punjab, it's around 170 ULBs. Perfect. Uh, any other questions on the state and the national dashboard that we can help answer? And I mean, if you want to talk, just raise your hand up. You can also voice out your question. So, uh... State dashboard, uh, I'll just de demonstrate it, but um, it is more or less similar to what the functionalities so are concerned for the national dashboard, but except the program implementation map. Yeah, so uh, this is how a state dashboard will look like. Uh, currently, so it will have similar to the national dashboard, it will also have an overview page and uh, all of the individual modules will be listed under it. So there is a property tax, state license. So currently we have nine modules which are uh, linked to the state dashboard. Yeah, as Ajay was pointing out, we can get extract data from the external application also. Suppose, for example, there is an application for solid waste management with say, which is built by company X and they want to use digit DSS services to uh, see the show the data on the dashboard. Um, you will, instead of nine boxes, you will, you will see one more box as solid waste management and the data will get extracted from company X. 
through the open APIs. Okay, if there are no more questions, maybe we can move, move on, Ajay. Oh uh, yeah, I think we can move on. DSS is yes, I mean, you said it right, I So I think someone had asked for a product demo. So I think I've just shared a link. So that should have all the product videos. And we also have an uh, open public instance. So you actually want to go through the instance, log in as a citizen, as an employer, figure out what the application looks like. And it has been upgraded to 2.7, which we do as part of each release. So all of uh, the things that we're talking about today will be available on this instance. So you can definitely obviously go through that as well. Shout out Shik, you can continue. Okay. So moving on. So now um, we'll talk about uh, birth and death module. So birth and death, uh, this module was developed by one of our ecosystem partners. And uh, we took the contribution back uh, into the digit. So currently in India, uh, so there is for citizens, there is no portal or service where they can actually uh, download these certificates. Currently they have to go to the municipal corporation office or the registrar office and get their birth or death certificates. So this was uh, implemented uh, to actually enable the citizens for easy downloading of these certificates. As well as an employee at the uh, registrars or municipal corporation, they can also feed the data that they receive from a hospital or a morgue uh, in birth and birth or death respectively, or even if, if it is, or if it is at a home birth. So any of these data, so they can push this into the system uh, through uh, one by two mothers. One is through a backend uh, service where they can upload the Excel and this data can be pushed to the uh, module. Second is through a easy user interface where they can enter uh, the details that they received from the hospital or the or other institutions and they can submit the uh, record. So the flow that I'm going to show is that um, how, uh, so first of all, let's look at how, what are the features in this particular module. So for an employee, they can create uh, birth and death registrations, like I just mentioned. They can search existing records where, uh, where any of the legacy record, which has been pushed manually or entered by the at registrar only, so they can search for those records. They can make edits to uh, these records depending on they have been given that access. So we, uh, we can uh, configure the access level for different employees, whether they want, can only view the records, whether they can only edit the reports or they can only you know, see the dashboard part of it. And for citizens, they can request for these certificates through the portal. They can make payments online if it is applicable. They can also, similar to an employee, they can also view the past records and they can uh, download the payment receipts if applicable. So uh, just a quick question. Um, so this, this was uh, developed with the support of our part, ecosystem partner. So any uh, guess on how many digit core service we I know, you know, there are so many, many digit core services that are available, but uh, our ecosystem partner has developed utilizing these core services. Uh, any guesses on how many services they were used and uh, how much time it took to develop this module. So I'll uh, just launch a poll. Uh, I think you can just put your answers here in terms of how much time did BEL, and BEL is Bharat Electronics Limited. Huge shout out and appreciation for them for contributing the code for the entire module. Uh, so yeah, take your pick. Everyone just going for the middle, which absolutely makes sense. <laughs> I'll just leave it out for uh, 10, 15 more seconds.
perfect i'll just close the poll so most of you i think have looked at six weeks i'll just share the results i think should be able to get a sense of it uh six weeks is a good guess because in one of our slides we've actually talked about partners building a module on digit between two weeks to four weeks as well but uh, i think abhishek can share the answer for this one so abhishek just let folks know how many weeks did it take for bell to uh, develop this one so the development and the implementation took uh, around two months so yeah so six to eight weeks you can yeah uh, i think most of the attendees were uh, around the ballpark yeah perfect and i think the idea is to give you a sense of there is an ecosystem of sis although being competitive in the market also do contribute back to the digit platform when they are doing it as part of their implementation so bell had a larger scope where they developed i think further four or five modules of which they've contributed two of those back which now are being used by other partners and they're building it at speed because most of the components are reusable so one obviously again we shout out to them at the same time i think this is another way in which a lot of partners do use a digit platform and which creates value for everyone which is again a new way of looking at digital public goods abhishek will just take you through both in the module yeah over to you. so yeah yeah like i was mentioned before so the barkandad module was developed with utilizing six of these digit core services among the main among many others so such as billing service application service demand service user service collection service and pdf service so i'll move on to the demo uh, just give me a minute yeah so hope you can see the screen so once the employee uh, has logged in with their access credentials so depending on their access so they can perform various actions so currently uh, for the employee they can see two cards that is for birth and death separately so let's look at birth uh, the module so the current employee currently can search for um, okay yeah so um sorry about that so let's so the flow that i will be showing will be that how an employee will create the registration for a new birth uh, that they received from the hospital and uh, with that the once the employee has completed the registration the citizen can log into the portal and can download the birth certificate for the, for that particular registration so first of all uh, click on birth registration icon here so you can enter the registration number here uh, for that particular so this this is a number that you must be receiving from the hospital and you can select the uh, hospital here and if it is not a, if it is not at a hospital you can mention uh, mention that here and uh, date of registration you select the date with which you are registered and also the date of birth and you can select the uh, gender of the child uh, so you can say and you can say the birth place so i'm only going to fill the uh, mandatory fields which are indicated by the asterisk for the interest of time so so you need to fill all of the mandatory fields um, so if you are uh, the address of your parents and uh, your permanent address of the parents can be different 
So to account for that, we have two different fields. But in most of the cases, this could be same, uh, more or less the same. So in that case, you can check this box and it will only take consider it as the permanent address of the parents. So here you can enter the building and house number and the street name. So, uh, so in some of the cases, there will be an informant. So this will be the name of the informant who has informed about the birth or death. So in birth, most of the cases, this will be the name of the hospital or the person at the hospital uh, or the person at the crematorium or the morgue in case of death. So that is not a mandatory field, so I'm not going to fill that. So once you have uh, filled all of the uh, mandatory fields, you can click on submit and uh, the record has been successfully submitted. So uh, now if you go to birth certificate again, and if you want to search for the registry that uh, search for these records as an employee, so you can put the filters here for the date range. So I'm choosing from 1st of May to current date. And uh, based on that, you can enter the, uh, click on the search registry. But if you want, if you want to search specifically for any particular uh, registration, you can enter any of these details such as registration number, place of birth, father's name, etc. So the employee can get a list of all the registration which are happening, which has happened for that particular date period. And they can also download these registrations through by clicking on here. So I'll quickly move on to uh, the, to show the uh, citizen side interface on how the citizen can actually download the, uh, this registration. So I'll just log out. So if you, as a citizen, you have access to all of the services. Now, if you go to birth and uh, you can get an option called download birth certificate. Here you can select the city and uh, date of birth, which I selected was 22nd. And uh, so you can search the registry. So as you can see the application that I just created, uh, application that I just created has appeared in the search result. And towards the far right and farthest right hand, you can see the download option. So currently it is configured such that the first download is free of charge. And if you try to download for the second time, then you will have a pay and download option here, which will take you to a third third party payment gateway. And once you complete that payment, then you will be able to download certificate currently. But since it's your first download, you can. Sorry. So you agree to the consent. So now uh, you can see the birth certificate along with the QR code in future cases where you need to have uh, verify this authenticity of the certificate. So with all the details that you have entered as the employee. So this is a very easy, uh, this, this whole module actually gives citizens much easier access to downloading the birth of the certificates. For the interest of time, I'm going to, I'm not going to show the, how the flow for the death how downloading a death certificate works, but uh, I can say this very much similar to how you have seen for the birth certificate as well. So I'll just move back, go back to the uh, presentation and take any questions regarding the birth and death, birth and death module. So any specific questions that you'd like us to answer specific to this module? If not, then we can move forward. Okay. We have a few, you can pick them off. Okay.
it's in the chat window. I can uh, read these out. So, are these modules embeddable in existing state applications? That's fairly easy. Answer is yes. So, when you say existing state applications, so state is already using a digit system or any other system, and they would want to uh, then use both in that as a standalone module as part of this, right? Then the answer is yes. If the context is different, you can let us know. But it again uses uh, fairly op open APIs, so it can be integrated with. It wouldn't need to be integrated with any of the modules, but uh, it is an independent module in itself. Uh, what if it fails to process the first run? Will it charge the next run? Uh, so, I think they are asking regarding the uh, downloadable certificates. Uh, so, 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 Shankar, Abhishek, one of you will have to mute. Go on mute. Yeah. Yeah, so only uh, only if the certificate gets downloaded successfully, then only uh, it will be charged. So again, this is not something that is, uh, you know, very uh, hard and fast. So this is completely up to the implementation. So currently it is implemented such that, but you can make it. Uh, so this again answers the question of Shinton also. Uh, so this is only for the, the, as per the requirement of the implementation, whether you want to charge for the first time, second time or third time or do not charge at all. So this is uh, this is only the demo which was implemented in the. That was the requirement basically yeah. from the client when uh, they had developed it. That once they'll issue second time, you'd have to pay a fee similar to you can imagine a driving license or any other ID. Generally, you have to ask government again, and they will charge you a fee for it. That was the requirement, but it can be changed. Uh, are these modules extendable to rural areas? Yes, so most of the modules in digit, I think they would have to be configured differently. But in terms of the functionality, for example, citizen grievance, right? This is a module which is applicable not just to urban rural, but any state department for that matter would want to have a grievance module where they can log complaints and uh, do all of that. So even though these uh, applications were created, specifically for urban a lot of these are extendable to other domains and they are used in different domains for example the birth and death module by bell is actually used not by rural or urban governments it's used by the cantonment boards in india so these are your defense establishments which run independently they are the ones who use who are using this module which is again fairly similar in terms of governance to an urban local body or even a rural panchayat in India's context. Okay, perfect. Any other questions? We can proceed. Uh, Shankar, you'd want to pick it up? Yeah, uh, Ajay. Yeah, uh, so basically this feature is like property uh, ID integration with the trade licenses. Um, so we have already seen the trade licenses demonstration in the previous release webinar, uh, where we showcased how an user or a trader can come to the urban local body or state department asking for a trade licenses using giving all the personal details and professional details. So this, this integration is basically about um, if it is an, a trade that is run in an immobile structure, we are capturing the property ID of the structure. Um, um, so if, if, if there is a property ID already existing for that particular property, the trade owner can specify the property ID and then say, I am going to um, do the trade in this particular property and building. Please provide me a trade license certificate. Suppose if there is a, assume that the bureaucrats wants to uh, capture more information like the property uh, tax system itself is not present in the city and only trade license application is present. Or even if the property tax application is present, 
um, if it is present, they have to ask for a proper care. If it is not present, but they don't have the resources to go on the ground to do a ground survey, this is another way of capturing data into the system. So whenever a user is coming for a trade lines application, as in few property details, uh, what is your building name, uh, certain property details, so that you create a lightweight property ID into the system. So the benefit of this is over a period of time, the property information gets accumulated with limited amount of information. As a bureaucrat, I will know that, say, there are like uh, 1,000 trades that are run in the city. And uh, I, I know that like that like 700 properties, lightweight properties that got created. Uh, so I need to go for a particular survey so that survey assessment so that I can assess 700 properties and, is there, and check is there a possibility of increasing revenue in terms of uh, putting property tax to the citizen. So that's a benefit of this integration. Um, so, uh, yeah, so this is whatever I explained now is given in a diagram where you can see there is an intersection between property tax and trade lines as a property ID and there is an anomaly detection. So assume that um, the property already there is a property tax system and the property is registered as a residential property and assume that that property ID is tagged with a trade license application, you can understand that there is a revenue loss because that property should have been assessed as a mixed property, right? So there is a revenue loss and then bureaucrats can take necessary uh, actions upon it. And on the other hand, you can see there are a lot of unnecessary properties where you don't have a property assessment in the, in the application, but you can see there are 100 trade license application and then out of 700 properties which got light created in the system. You can ask your assessor to go on the ground, assess the 700 properties and then see is there a way to improve your revenue. That's the advantage of it. Now I'll just quickly run into the demonstration of the application where we have an integration. Um, yeah. So I am logging in as an citizen or a tradee trader who wants to apply for a trade licenses. So I'm just running fast because we have already seen this in the previous demonstration how a trade licenses apply. Um, this is the, the, the basic digit protocol where we have an, a mobile number OTP based login. And also this is like uh, based on the OTP guidelines where you have to up front tell the citizen what is the uh, number of applications or what is the uh, data that is needed to create this application. And, uh, yeah. So in the next screen, it will ask about what is your trade. Assume that I'm a cement trader. and uh, structure type, whether it is an immobile structure. Then what is a building, whether it is a Pakka construction or Kacha construction? What is the commencement of trade? And all these questions are configurable, depending from state and state and city to city, you can change the questions, whatever you want, depending on the data, what do you want to capture? And uh, this, this trade category, trade type and subtype are like master data information. And we have a standard exhaustive list. Over and above, if you want any more list, you can add it as part of master data configuration in your state and city. So accessory basically talks about if you have any compressor, motor, or uh, dangerous offensive, uh, offensive uh, um, generators, or if there are any surgical equipments. So I'm saying no, and for, for the sake of demo. So this is where the integration starts. Do you know your property? If it is yes, then already I know a property ID which is present. I can put my property ID and say, this application, trade list and application is tagged to a particular property. If it is no, then I need to create, I need to add some information for the application to understand that there is a property, but I can give you limited information of the property so that a property can be created in the system. So first use cases, I'm saying there is a property already existing. So when I click on next, it goes to a search screen where user can search a property ID using different parameters. So first I'm selecting city. And for now I'm searching with the mobile number, there are different uh, criteria. Yeah, I'm searching the property with the help of a mobile number. So for this mobile number, it contains around 15 properties that are tagged. So this same owner contain as 15 properties in the city. 
and I want to say tag this property, which is 6563. I can select this property. So this property is tagged. Assume that I made a mistake, I want to tag a different property. I can click on change property, which will again go back to the search screen. Again, you can search for few properties, uh, search a single property and then tag it to this particular application. So when I click on next, it goes to the trade ownership details. So now we tag the property. We enter the trade information. Now we are saying who is the trade owner, who is the owner of the trade. So I'm getting certain information that help me identify who is the owner of the trade. Then owner's address, then proof of identity. owner's photograph. So this photograph will be printed in the trade license certificate that is generated at the end of the workflow. So again, standard digit application service where it goes to the summary page. If you want to change any information, you can click on change to go back to the particular step and then make some changes. So submit application. So this is one use case where I'm tagging a property and then attaching it to the trade license application. So now we'll go to the other use case where I said there is a lightweight create of property when we are creating a trade license application. I'm using the same flow, but only change what I'll do is that I'll do a property create this time. I'm just rushing through the steps because it is redundant in terms of demo. Okay, now I don't know the property. When I click on next, it will ask for the property information. It will ask for like, what is the property type, whether it is independent building, vacant land or flat or a part of the building. I'm saying independent building. What is the total land area and square feet? What is the total constructed area? And what is the usage type for which usage it is used? So since I'm applying for a trade, I'm saying it's mixed usage and I need to give the location of the property. Then type of ownership. So now we are getting the property owner detail. Uh, who is the owner of the property? special owner category. So is a property owner belong to a defense personnel, whether, it's a, whether he or she is a freedom fighter. For now, I'm saying not, not applicable. So now, and parallel application is, one application is getting forked into two. Here you can see, uh, we started with the trade license application, but internally we have created a property tax application. So in one flow, we are generating two different applications, one to the trade license department, one to the property tax department. So now property tax application is submitted. Now if you can proceed, I'm still in the trade license flow. Uh, I completed two steppers. Now in the third stepper of trade license flow, I need to upload the document details. Also you can see the property ID got populated here. For the application, what I submitted, there is a property that got generated with a lightweight property create with limited property information. And I click on next. Now this is the trade owner detail. The owner detail, what we entered earlier is a property owner. This is the trade owner. Check is the trade owner. Now proof of identity for the trade owner. This is standard application flow where we are asking certain information to identify the uh, property uh, trade owner. Uh, yeah, so again, it goes to the summary page. I submit an application. Application failed successfully. Something is wrong. 
but this is the flow uh, where you submit an application and it goes for a trade license flow. Um, so now, yeah, coming back to here, I'll just give more context on why this is important, why this property ID linking is important. Um, so we started with the trade license linking, right? Assume that there is a similar uh, use case in water connection and sewerage connection. Uh, uh, you say there is a commercial entity for this for which water is used, and then your property ID says the property ID is for residential. There is a conflict of interest here, and there is a revenue loss. As an administrator, you know you need to fix that. And same, same is the case with the sewerage connection. Assume that it is not necessary only with the digit application. Assume there is a third party integration with the electricity board department tomorrow. Uh, electricity meters are there, digital meters or normal meters, where an EB department person comes every month to access the EB meter. Assume that meter detail is able to, you are able to integrate that information with the property ID. Right, that becomes a huge leap. So where the electricity department user can talk to urban local body with an API saying, just give me for this property ID, whether it, your property says, whether it is residential or commercial. Assume that that property ID says it's a residential property and then the electricity meter, the, the uh, sorry, that property ID is, is got for commercial purposes and the electricity meter uh, connection says it is a residential meter, the EB department has a possibility to improve the revenue if you if you are able to tag this integration. Same is the case with solid waste management. Few of our Indian cities also now talking about putting taxes for generation of solid waste management every, every month uh, based on the segregation of uh, degradable and non-degradable waste based on the weightage, uh, especially uh, in, in, in Delhi and other states. So assume you are able to tag a solid waste management application with that of the property ID. So you can say for a period of time, a period of month for this particular property ID with the resident of four, four people have generated like 700 kgs of biodegradable and 80 kgs of non-biodegradable waste. And then accordingly, I'm going to charge the user. So this, this is the importance of this integration. What we did is an exemplar with trade licenses, but the possibilities are more. Even you can extend it with vaccination. The, the, the possibilities are humongous. We can think of certain use cases, but, but it, it, can, it can scale up to so many use cases. Even it can be used for vaccination drive, as I told. Assume there is a vaccination drive, and then you know in this property ID, there are certain residents, and then you are already vaccinated, few residents, and then this is the case. It gives it gives a lot of information to the administrator to, to put where to put the resources. That's the most important task, right? You, you save a lot of amount of time and money and resources if we have this integrated uh, data structure. That's the advantage of this particular integration what we are showcasing now. Yeah, I am done with my presentation. If there are any questions I can take regarding this. Perfect. Thank you for that, Shankar. Just checking in and I think we have uh, yeah. some time. Uh, over to you, uh, Ajay. Yeah, sure, Shankar. So any questions on uh, property tax and trade license integration or any other Ajay? property ID integrations? You can hear me, right? Ajay, you're on the computer. Okay, perfect. So just checking in if there are any questions on uh, this specific integration or any other property IT integration with other uh, modules or systems in digit. If not, I'll also open the floor up for any other questions that you generally have. I'll given that we have, I think, 10, 15 minutes, and I'll obviously wrap this up only for everyone. Uh, anything that you'd want to ask uh, could be general to eGov, to Digit, if not specific to this webinar. And you can raise your hand up if you wish to speak or put it in the chat window or Q&A box. I'll just wait it out for two minutes. Perfect, looks like everyone is clear on what happened in the webinar and generally very aware about digit and ego. So uh, I'm just gonna run a poll. 
for everyone, which is basically to get a sense of two things. One is how aware are you of, and I know I talked about this today, so maybe this needs to be modified to say how aware were you of the public demo instance of Digit before today? And if the information presented today in the webinar was useful for you. So, yeah. I'll just leave it out there for the next 30 seconds. I've only seen half the responses. Meanwhile, any questions that you want to ask, raise your hand up, put it in the chat window. Perfect. I'll just close uh, the poll in the next five seconds. Perfect. I've ended it. So, to share the results so that I can talk through it. So, some of you were not aware of the public instance, which is fair. If you're not aware, I think I'd put down the link. So, basically, whatever that you saw today, and all the modules of Digit, you can actually go through uh, everything through a public instance and all of the features are already updated on the microsite as well. So I'll ping the microsite for your reference and even the public instance is there as part of this microsite. So you can definitely go through this and go through the demos yourself as well. Uh, and thank you for basically this is self-praise second and third someone who said that they'll not share because they already potentially know so no worries i'll just stop sharing this uh so there's a, a question apart from digit what are the other dpgs that ego has been working on where all have they been adopted there's a link that i can refer to so basically uh digit is if you look at the different DPGs which are built by eGov, right? Uh, digit has majorly been Digit Urban. Even what we showcased today was majorly Digit Urban. Apart from this, we also work in health, uh, sanitation, and public finance. So in health, we have a platform called DIVOC, which again is a certified DPG. So DIVOC has been implemented in five countries, including India. So the implementation happens at a national level when we do an MOU with the health ministry of the respective government. Uh, so I think uh, that's one of the DPG that I can talk about. Other than that, we're also building another one called IFIX in the public finance domain. Uh, so these are the two different DPGs and the sanitation DPG currently are focused on fecal sludge management, which is there as part of the same digit when you go through the products and modules. At the same time, FSM will be there as part of a larger platform called the SHA. And there are different microsites talking about each one of them. So let me also share those. This current link only had urban. So this talks about DIVOC, the health DPG. So the vaccine certificates that you get in India and four other countries basically are generated by this module. There is IFIX, which is the public finance platform. I'm also sharing the link here. So you can obviously go through that. And as I said, sanitation is currently structured because there's only one module, which again comes under urban department, at least in the Indian context. Uh, it's structured under the same core microsite, but this is the product which has been built and deployed. This has been deployed in the state of Odisha, currently in three ULBs, and there is a government order to take this pan state. IFIX, currently we're looking at Punjab. So Punjab, uh, all the gram panchayats have an integration done with IFIX, and there's another product under IFIX called Mgram Seva, which has been implemented to capture or uh, the transactions from citizens end for uh, water bill payment. But that's basically all the DPGs that we work with. And all of them are obviously open source under MIT license. So 
you are feel free to use any of them. Hope that answers the question. Or anything else that I can uh, help answer for you. If not, we'll be happy to give you your 15 minutes back and close this early. So double accounting system is there as part of the digit urban module. So all the urban modules, I'm just putting the link here. So everything from building permit to property tax to trade license to double accounting, which is the finance system, all of them are there as part of these links. So before I close the session, actually uh, take 30 seconds to go through all the links and uh, for your own reference. Is it possible to customize to local language? Yes. So currently even we talked about the Bell implementation, right? The birth and death module. So there is localization done for nine languages in the Bell implementation and it's a configuration. So you can obviously configure this in any language possible. All the screens, it can be done. Perfect. I think this should be it. Uh, thank you everyone for joining in and thank you Shankar and Abhishek for taking us through these sessions. Uh, we'll see you again, I think, for the next release. And I hope this was informative and useful for everyone. Have a nice evening, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Ajay. Bye. Thank you.